Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. And in this lesson, we're gonna go over the workshop framework display rack script, which allows you to create your own display containers for players to show off items so they can do collections or maybe just uh, racks for items. And today to demonstrate that, we're gonna create ourselves a grenade crate somewhere the player can display all of their different grenades and quickly grab them and uh, roll out with them. Now the, uh, the grabbing them is not particularly efficient, but it just looks really cool and feels really fun. So I found this cool uh, beer crate model, which happens to be just wide enough to squeeze in the grenades. The baseball grenades a little snug, but I'm okay with that with a little bit of clipping on there. It's still, I think it looks passable, especially in the game. You know, we're zoomed in real close, but generally in the game, you're going to see it from like this perspective. And it's hard to tell that that's, you know, that wouldn't possibly fit in there. Um, so close enough is what I say here. Um, so just like the uh, cluttered item tutorial, what I've done to start is I went ahead and picked out the model I want and set it up at the 000 position. And then I found the uh, different items that I wanted and I started tweaking them. Now with this particular list, none of the grenades sit nicely in exactly the same spot, um, but I found that most of the grenades, so everything except for the frag, the uh, baseball and the Molotov, all of the rest of these guys, they all sit at approximately the same spot. Their, uh, and if I semi-hide this, their height is approximately, the bottoms all are the same. And so those worked out great. Now the, uh, the frag grenade and the baseball grenade, their bottoms or their origins were right in the center. And so they ended up being, they had to float a little bit to share the same height as these. Cause remember the goal, just like I showed you guys in the cluttered item tutorial is to find items that will all can share position data and still be swapped and it still look nice and I found that okay so actually I like there's uh, four of them so it's this this guy over here which one is this the plasma grenade also has the problem of it's kind of floating a little bit but the nice thing with this crate from that same idea of the player is going to be standing from this angle it's not going to be easy to tell that these are actually floating excuse me um, I thought that was a worthy sacrifice to have them floating a little bit in order to use all of these now the Molotov cocktail unfortunately if I rotate it uh, the same angle as these were required because these actually lay on their side normally whereas the Molotov stands up um, if I rotated it to match then it is like completely sideways and just would clip so I just decided for this particular grenade box we're just not going to allow Molotov cocktails and that's fine we can always create a second version of this that just holds Molotovs if we wanted but this will work for a good majority of the uh, grenades and uh, so I've got some position data set up for these you'll notice I skipped all of these slots and that's because I know that Basically, the one that would go, the one that would go in this slot right here, would have the same uh, y and the y coordinate would be the same as, or the x coordinate would be the same as this one, and the y coordinate would be the same as this one. So I'm able to just figure it out without needing to go through and take the time to position all of these um, because it's an, a perfect grid. So that's why I just saved myself a little step there. If you guys don't feel comfortable doing that, or if you're not following that, you know, no problem. Just go ahead and you know, go ahead and place these in every single slot and then you'll be able to copy paste the data. So now that we've got our position data figured out, the next thing we've got to do is create ourselves our uh, form list. So we're going to go into miscellaneous form list and I've already got mine set up here. Uh, let's see, demo and display grenades. And you can see I found all the grenades that would fit in nicely based on that position once I figured it all out from here. So these will all work within our little system. Now a nice thing about containers, which is what we're going to set up this display rack is, is we can actually double the use of this formula. So we can use it once to determine which are eligible to go in each of our slots through the script. I'm going to show you guys how to set up. But the containers also have an extra little field that limits what items the player can put in it and it takes a form list. So we can actually use this form list for that as well to make sure the player can't even deposit things that won't work in it. So that's awesome, that's native to the game, that'll just work naturally, and uh, we'll be able to take advantage of that. So that's pretty cool. And that is why we're gonna actually use the container type. So technically, uh, I, I was, let's go back. With the cluttered item, I told you guys you could use basically anything that could hold a script. So you can make it an activator, you can make it a container, you can make it a furniture. With the display rack script, the display rack script that's what we're going over today needs to have, the item itself needs to be able to act as a container in a way that the player can activate and use the object and there are only two types that do that and that uh, that is the container type and the furniture type with the furniture type and uh, I'll just show you real quick here you actually have to check in this box over here called has container and uh, but we're not going to do that we are going to use just the container record and one of the reasons we're going to do that and the furniture might have this and I just don't know where it is but that's because of this little contains only 
and the fact that we don't want anyone to interact with it as furniture anyway. We just want the player to be able to deposit items in it and have them be displayed. Uh, and so we're going to put our form list down here in contains only. And what that'll do is if the player tries to drop something in here, that's not this. So they try and drop some fruit in here or something or um, ammunition for other weapons or armor or whatever. It'll, the, the container will just flat out reject it. Those get a message in the corner that you can't put that there. So that makes it a lot easier and makes it very clear to the player in game what they should be putting in. As they try and put the wrong stuff in, the game will warn them. Okay, so I started a new container record, and just like the clutter item, I'm just walking you guys back through the steps that I already did off camera. But uh, basically, I found this model that I like, and uh, it was called Beer Crate Static in the static records, and I copied the model path from that model, and I went edit here, and I pasted it in here. Then uh, I gave the name, gave it a unique ID up here, uh, I then went and chose some sounds. So when you click on this open, it'll bring up the sound, and you can just, generally if you just search for open, you'll find a whole bunch of different useful sounds that uh, will work nicely. Which one did I go with? Uh, cabinet wood. Let's see. Cabinet. Oops. Cabinet. Wood. Bin. Here we go. Okay. Uh, and usually when you find one, the closed one will have the exact same name. It'll just be closed. So generally this pattern is followed throughout with the sound. So that works out nicely. And that just gives the player some feedback when they actually interact with the container. And then when they close the when they actually close the window. So when they use the transfer button on there, it will play this little sound effect. It's not necessarily you can actually skip that. Um, I just like filling it out because I love multiple levels of feedback. I like visual feedback. I like some uh, some notification feedback with little messages in the corner and audio feedback. Just all make sure the player knows that it's working. Since these games are notoriously buggy, it's often when you're using mod stuff, I feel like most players are a little more skeptical about whether things are actually working or if they're buggy. So if you can give them more uh, interaction or more uh, notices that things are functioning, it's uh, it makes it a little clearer to them that things are working as they're supposed to. Okay, so then the last step is to add our display rack script. So you can either click add and do that, or you can go to gameplay papyrus script manager, search it up and then drag and drop it, your choice. Once it's up there, it'll either pop up automatically with the screen or you can double click to bring this up. Now you have three currently, and uh, as always with the scripts that I write that I'm showing you guys, if you ever find at the time you're watching this video, there's more than what you're seeing here, click on any of the new ones, and uh, there will usually be a documentation string here explaining what you're supposed to do with it, and hopefully it'll be self-explanatory enough, or I will have made some sort of follow-up video or put it some more notes somewhere for you guys to read and figure out what those extra fields do. Okay, so uh, we're not going to fill out this rack full message. This is something you can fill in so that if the player fills up all the slots, it will tell them something. By default, the message says something like this rack is full or something for something very generic. But if you want it to be specific to your object, you know, if we wanted to say something like this crate can't hold any more grenades, we could set that up to do that right there. But we're not going to bother for that. For this demo, that's just basic. Uh, but you can see here I have got all 24 of my little slots filled out. And uh, that was real simple. We just click on add for our object form. This is where we're gonna select our form list. So we just go uh, form list and uh, we'll just type in the first, whoops, right at the end there. Oh God, ha, ah, there we go, grenade. Okay, so then we just select our form list here and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the first entry and we're gonna just copy paste this data in. So position X, position Y, position Z, and then our rotations. Now you might think that this is horribly time consuming to do 24 times, but I actually cheated it. And what I would do is I would just duplicate. So now we've got, you can see like our object form is already filled out. And for the sake of this, because this is a nice even thing. Well, when I look at this, if you look at these two, if we bring them both up, you can see that the only thing that actually changed between them is the X field. So then all I have to do is just update the position X. And then I repeat that, just uh, duplicate it and update that next one, etc. So we'll go ahead and I've already filled all these out. So we'll go ahead and remove all these, but you would just repeat that process and fill all those out. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually have set up, maybe you want you know, one column each to have their own form list or whatever you wanna do. I did it this way and uh, now I'm gonna pop in game, show you what that looks like. Okay, we're in game here. So let's go ahead and build this, uh, build our little grenade crate. And uh, I forgot to set it up so it could be built on a surface. That is real easy to do though. And uh, we'll pop in here and I got a bunch of grenades in my inventory. And I'll show you what happens when you drop all of these in here. So uh, what's going to happen is you'll see each one's going to appear a little bit off to the side from that. And then it gets moved into position. Now, the reason it actually has to do that, that placing them out in the world 
is to ensure that whenever you use something like a weapon with mods on it, that uh, those mods are not lost, that it does become the actual thing. Because one of the benefits of this system is that you can just grab these things as if they really exist in the world, because they really do. They're set up in a way that only the player can take them, and uh, we want to make sure that they're the actual item and not just a copy of the item, which is... Uh, which would make it so you would lose any mods or anything like that. And obviously grenades don't have mods, but they are a weapon record. And I think I have the whole system set up that anything lootable just gets dropped there just in case. Because God knows what kind of crazy mods people will come up with over the years. And I want to just make sure that this system works with any of them. So that appearing temporarily there is just to make sure it's the actual item. Then it positions it into place there. And you can see that it does put them all in groups. That was a, a speed thing. So part of the, the code whenever I write this stuff is just I'm just optimizing for speed as opposed to prettiness so obviously if you want them to be more disorganized you know you can do things like i'm doing here like pick up a few and fill the slots out or uh the player could do something like uh putting in just a few at a time so just putting in you know one of each and then exiting and then coming back in and then doing another one etc and if they want them organized in some fancy way but my bet more likely is that uh, if you were to release something like this as a mod that you'd end up with a player who just built you know they would just build a bunch of these in a row and uh, just put in each grenade type in there so you know they would be like there's my frag grenades this one's gonna be for my plasma grenades and then just go ahead and put them in and then they wouldn't even worry about that but personally I love the scattered organization when I do stuff which is why I love the random cluttered system that uh, we talked about in another episode of this that was also added to the same patch workshop framework and uh, there you go so there's uh, how the rack system works it can work for any item type that can be looted and uh, it's nice and easy to set up just like the cluttered items but it actually displays stuff for the player so it doesn't again does not have to be limited to anything like bobbleheads or trophies it can be used for weapons or armor literally anything you can have in your inventory you can set it up to work with this display rack script uh, one last thing before we end this video, if you find that the display rack is not working correctly for you after you follow this demonstration and say all of the items are appearing in whatever you set up as your first display spot, so say for example all of your grenades as you enter them are all piling into this position right here, it means you have an outdated version of the script. I did hotfix the script at one point. The uh, patch 2.0.0D or higher should uh, have the correct information. So if you're still finding that happening after that patch, you're sure you have that patch in, definitely report it to me i'll get it fixed asap but that was uh, fixed so if you're running into that go update workshop framework and that should resolve it for you